three days out of Algiers when we got hit, which according to my reckoning should bring us somewhere near Benghazi. Then there's something wrong with your reckoning. We've walked 30 miles or more without seeing so much as a bird. You sailors make me sick. You can't walk a couple of yards without moaning. I didn't join the Navy to do route marches. I didn't join the Army to land up in the sea either. the plane. We hadn't much to carry. The ship had gone down too quickly. I see. And about how long after she was torpedoed did it take her to go to the bottom? Ten minutes, sir. Fifteen minutes, sir. Well, ten to fifteen minutes. Thank you very much. Well, you certainly seem to have had a tough time. Anyway, the chief of the officer will look after you. Just go along and get your pay and get kitted up. Aye, aye, sir. Same price to you, Sergeant. Report to the Maritime Detachment Office. Very good, sir. And, of course, you'll get your survivor's leave. So you better report back here in 14 days' time. Right, survivors, left, turn. Quick, march. <laughs> Perfect day. What are you going to have, Mike? Something cool, Bill. Two beers, please. Yes, sir. Well, we've about done Cairo today, Mike. You mean Cairo's done us. Have you any change left? Not much. Pity we haven't got something we can sell. Thank Quinn and mine went down on the old rock and ruin. Thanks. Well, this is my unlucky day. Dave, how are you? We thought you'd gone down with a blooming ship. That was too much to expect. What are you doing here? I'm on seven days' leave. It's up tomorrow. You only leave two, three more days. How are you making out? We were just trying to work out the best way to spend our money. You can have a good time here, if you've money. Why? Are you skinned? Me? No. What do you chaps drinking? I think I'll have a scotch. And me. Three large scotches, George. Yes, sir. What happened to your boat load? Came ashore, tamped the beach until the plane spotted us. What happened to your little lot? Made straight for port. I took command, rest was easy. Funny thing, I came out without money. Mike, can you lend me a quid? Did I ever tell you that story about the two Jerry's who went to heaven? I don't think so. Ah, to the Merchant Navy. Look here, you crooks. I asked for a quid. 
Well, it's been nice seeing you again. Thanks for the drinks. Yes, thanks. You can't go like this. You said yourself it's your unlucky day. We've got a date around the back of the permits. Eighty piastres, please, sir. who buys us the doubles. Are you two following me around? You sure you're not following us around, trying to get the price of those drinks back? It's an idea. It's only an idea. Don't tell me you two are protecting me again. Protecting you? If he's engineer on this ship, we're sunk already. Come on, Mike. Let's get our life belts on before it's too late. See you later, Jonah. Summer of 1936, and the very next year, the same thing happened again. Hello, Tashi. Seen the second engineer? No, but I'll tell you something. I've just heard the old man tell the mate we're making for Liverpool. At last night, you said the second officer told you New York. Ah, that was a mistake. So is this, if you ask me. Did you hear that, Mike? The steward said he heard the captain say we're bound for Liverpool. Couldn't be. Liverpool be Thursday. What do you think that says the Queen Mary? Well, I'm telling you. I'd just take me old man up his bluff. I was as near as I am to you when he said it. As clear as a bell, he said. At the very latest, by Friday. I say, lads, Stuart just heard the old man say that we're going to Liverpool. I'll bet. 
Where? Liverpool. He says it's right. Heard your man talking to the Met. We're not going back to NZ by any chance? <laughs> Yesterday was New York. I know, but that was only a guess. This sounds like the real thing. Well, if it's true, I'll give him a beer at it. It's worth mine, too. I've always wanted to take it. Just like the army, late on the job again. Make your own tea next time. Pull me out of the cup, mate. Stripe, eh? Hello. What the hell happened to Moore? He got his way up. He had to make the tea. Go on, make as much flour as you like. Don't mind us. Don't look like Liverpool to me. Not unless there's one in Italy. I heard a bloke say it was Barry. This ship's going to be short of a steward, unless he's quick. Mike, second officer said we're not unloading here. No? The convoy's put in to pick up some more troops. Will we get any shore leave? Shore leave. That's all you blokes ever think about. I never met such a bunch. They're giving us four hours. That's a hell of a lot of good anyway. fashioned. Only a hundred liras too, and no coupons. They won't be fully fashioned long if you shove your fist down them like that. What do you think of this, boys? <laughs> and a drop of the real stuff too. How much? But it isn't there. How old did you say this was? Four hundred years. It's guaranteed. Well, made in Birmingham, it says here. Where? Ah, boy. I wonder if Sparks has put the radio on you. days that dragged along were colorless and slow. Those dreary, weary days that lagged along as if they'd never go are now at last behind me. Finally, all is enchantment to me. the 
people that I meet as I hurry down the street seem to know I'm on my way coming to you this is a beautiful day I'm treading who should relieve Mars on the four inch I should look alive and get up there then Oh, that's a night nice late, Bill. My heart with happiness sings. I'll see. Now, I don't want to half, but take high finance. What does it all boil down to? Did you ever read a pound note? Well, it says the Bank of New Zealand, Australia, or England promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of one pound. Now, what do you think they'd do to me if I walked into the Bank of England and planked down a pound note? No idea. Well, they'd give me a kick in the pants, that's what. That's high finance, me lad. It's a vicious circle of everybody owing everybody and nobody paying nobody. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, boys. I've got something special. I've got some news for you. I've just been talking to the Sparks. He tells me what... <laughs> Good shot, Harry. Not very funny. <laughs> looking very worried, Tashy. Hi, second. I've been looking all over ship for you. Would you come below and have a look at condenser pump? It's packing you up. What again? Nip up and tell the chief. Tell him I'm down below. Uh -huh. Slowed. What the devil's up? Chief here. What's the matter? What's going on down there? The condenser pump's packed up. We've had to stop the engines or we lose what's left of our water. And the ballast pump's still under repair. Do you have to pick a time like this, Mr. McGill? How long will it take you to fix it? Oh, the good Lord alone knoweth. And the makers of the blasted thing. Sydney winds on a high. Can you hear me? I can hear you. What's the trouble? Condenser pump. And the ballast pumps down too. When will you have way on? Can't say yet. Probably several hours. So you will have to leave you then. Follow instructions number three. Instructions number three. Good luck. Very huh? quiet with the engine stops. Alone, alone. All, all alone. Alone on a wide, wide sea. Ancient Mariner. I'm an ancient Mariner long enough. You back my bread run when this war's finished. Hack to the war. Seems funny to think of it. Try if you'll go back to his bread round. Ken will be a crooky spreader, whatever that is. Moore will go back to his lab work. Scotty will be a fitter and turner, wasn't it, Scotty? Jock will be driving a lorry. And Kelly, he'll be an acrobat again. I'll go back to being a costing clerk. Oh, will I? I wonder if you will, I'll go back to where we were before. 
It takes some settling down to. There won't be no after the war for any of us if this old tub doesn't hurry up and shift herself. <laughs> you see, the way I look at it is this. The world's like this ship, drifting along with her engines bust. But where are we drifting to? Well, I did hear the third officer. No, it's the, the world I'm talking about. It's drifting on the rocks, chum. That's what. And you and me have got to lend a hand. Politics ain't my cup of tea. There you are, you see. Laissez faire. Well, what do you want me to do? Give up the sea and study for Parliament? No, I'm just trying to wake you up to a proper sense of your responsibilities. There's work to be done. We've got to sweep away all these trusts and cartels and... What are you going to do? Lock an afternoon to shut down, I suppose. No, do it constitutionally. I see. Nice target we are now. Stuck in the middle of nowhere, all by ourselves. Anyway, you boats can't hear us with our engine stop. They can. And there are such things as periscopes, planes, and e-boats. Why don't you chuck in a couple of cruisers and a battleship and make a job of it? It's a kind of lonely feeling, isn't it? No use me thinking about politics. I probably shan't be in port the next time a general election takes place. Well, you can tell your wife which way to vote, can't you? My wife? Yes, appeal to her common sense. Impress her some of the issues involved. How long have you been married to her? Twenty-five years. Well, you ought to know her well enough by now. Now, listen, chum. My wife's got plenty to do without messing about with politics. Look, I'm just trying to make you politically conscious. Yes, well, I'd rather be happy and unconscious. That's cynics like you that's got the world into this flaming mess. Ready now. You can ring on any time. Give us a slow head first and we'll see how she goes. Okay? Okay. about seven hours. I wonder how long it'll be before we catch up or rest. If I know the engineers on this ship, we'll never catch up. Want a cigarette for the workers? Likely to have any more trouble? I couldn't say. We've got a patched up. Where'd you pick that up? In Bali. Funny thing to buy in Italy. Hello, wife. No. Secret? In a way. He won't talk. You wouldn't tell me who you bought that necklace for. Doesn't even look as if it's a poor properly. It doesn't. Then why buy it? You're a couple of curious blighters, aren't you? If you must know, I bought it for my wife's mother. A duck teapot? I've got my reasons. I first met Rose through her brother Tom. She asked me home several times, but the family was always there. Ernie, leave those stamps alone and come and sit up at the table. Just stick him a Congo's in, Ma. Sharp, they say. We'll do that just as well after tea. You're a nice example, George. Stop reading that paper and come up to the table. 
The same every Sunday. All right, all right. Ruth, what are you doing with that thief? I'm just coming. Shall I go and help her, Mrs. George? You sit where you are, Mr. Larkin. She's quite capable of... Ernie. Mr. Larkin. Thank you. Ernie, will you stop behaving like a young hooligan? There you are. You're the what people will think of us. The same the other evening when Mr. Afton came round. I'd only been gluing my bow fighter. A chair is not the place to glue airplanes. Wasn't anything. It made Mr. Afton very uncomfortable. So that's why he was sticking around. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing funny about it, Mr. Larkin. And if Mr. Afton hadn't been such a gentleman... Gentleman. Makes me sick. I like a man who's careful about his appearance. But when they're that fussy... Same as in the army. Spit and polish. Yes, but you are a lot worse than Fred Afton, my girl. Let me tell you that. Where did you get that derby <laughs> from? The other pot wasn't empty. Well, you could have emptied it. You know very well this one drips. You kept calling me. I've not used the derby for months. You know that. There, you see, dripping all over my best cloth. Don't go on, Mum. As if I hadn't done enough washing and ironing. All right, I'll wash it. Oh, yes, you'll do this and you'll do that and what you ever do. It does a share, Pastor Jim. That's right. Now, you defender. A lot of thanks I get in this house for working myself to death. Getting you off to work in the morning, getting Ernie off to school, slaving to keep the place clean. She's off again. Oh, dry up, Dad. Come on, Mum, get on with your tea. I don't want any tea to choke me. It's always the same. Whenever I say a word, your father bites my head off. I'm going upstairs. That's all your fault. Sunday afternoon, the only time I get a bit of quiet and you've got to create a row. Nobody ever thinks of me. I'm going down to the warden's post. You ought to have known how Mother feels about the derby. Oh, to hell with the derby. I suppose I'd better go and soothe the old lady. Sorry about this, Bill. That's all right. Half a dollar. Don't be nervous. We would have seen her with a chap called Arnold Baker. You little brat. Just put him in wires to you. Ta-da. I don't know what to say. All this in front of you. I'm so ashamed. These things happen. But they're always happening here. I'm tired of it all over a blooming teapot. Now, don't upset yourself like that. Look here. How would you like to come to the palace tonight? Oh, no, thanks. I couldn't. I feel that miserable. I'd only spoil it for you. Besides, I've seen it. But they changed the program today. Oh, so they do. I forgot. So we went to the palace that night, and six months later, I married her. But why buy another dead teapot? Because her mother's coming from Middlesbrough to spend my next leave with us. And I figured that if the old Crown Derby could get her out of the way, then this damn thing ought to pack her back to Middlesbrough at the double. <laughs> You'd never suspect old Bill had been a Casanova, would you? If it comes to that, nobody will suspect you. Who's this for? Spirit, Mike. Who is she? Just a girl. We imagined that. Well, if you really must know, she's one of the most beautiful girls in Liverpool. <laughs> That's a likely story. What part of Liverpool? You know, the corner next door to the... She works in a tobacconist shop. I see. You engaged to her? Not yet. I only met her last leave. I just happened to drift into the shop. And there she was. We thought we'd tell her right away. Yes? Uh, 20 players, please. Thanks. Nice day. Yes. Pretty good boys, Miss Fleece. Thank you. Anything else you wanted? Uh, no thanks. Good morning. Good morning. After that, of course, things went along swimmingly. The next day, there was a big dance on this story. So I just popped in and asked her if she had to come along. Uh, you wouldn't care to... Yes. 20 gold plate, please. Thank you.
What I was going to say was, I suppose you wouldn't like to... That is, if you can spare a... Here you are. And please don't ask again. We're so short of matches, we only have them for regular customers. I see. Thanks very much. Uh, three halfpence, please. Oh, yes. Thank you. We had a good time at the dance that night. I saw her on afterwards, and now we're practically... Well, that's the reason for that. You know, to look at you, Mike, you'd never guess. It only goes to show. There's something about the girls and tobacconists, especially in Liverpool. There's a little bit I used to blow and see sometimes, just on the visiting list. How's the toss of the Merchant Navy? Dave, darling. She's not your type, Mike, but attractive in a way. Why did you say this tobacconist was? Why? No reason. I just wondered. It wasn't by any chance a shop on the corner next to the Merchant Navy. <laughs> job. Looks as if we're for it. Not tonight. It'll be dark soon. Better keep them standing too, though. If we could make enough speed, we'd be up with the convoy by dawn. Sounds as though it's stopped. Wouldn't be too sure about that. All clear, boys. What was it? Reconnaissance plane. Yeah, I hope you're right. Of course I'm right. Now, as I was saying before we were interrupted, take advertising. That's a waste of the world's time. Lots of people spending their lives telling us how to use more fancy oil on our hair. When you lose your hair, they're telling you to rub something on to bring it back again, which it never does. Telling you to pour patent medicines down your throat to cure you of something you never knew you had. If you're lucky enough to own a car, they're telling you to sell it before you've had it ten minutes and buy a new one, which isn't any better. That's advertising for you. It's another vicious circle. Everybody's spending more than they can afford, buying things they don't need so that somebody can spend more money telling everybody to buy lots more of what they can quite well do without, if you can follow what I mean. <laughs> You're right, Connor. Foreign's gone, Jack? It was probably reconnaissance. Stand to until further orders. Aye, aye, sir. It was probably a reconnaissance. Stand to until further orders. Keep a sharp lookout, lads. Means all night again. Yeah.
Pass the word. Object reported on port quarter. Right for the convoy. Angel! Whatever it is, it's not the convoy. They're moving towards us. Beavos! Enemy on port quarter! <laughs> Out of action. Four inch gun deck. Can't see a thing. Adornius on the job now. You're telling us. I'll let you know if we get any of them, or if they get us. We shall probably know before you. All right, all right, I was only letting you know. Now, about this post-war planning. When this war's all over and you and me go back to civilian life, that's when the trouble's really going to start. They got us amidships, but you're all right for the time being. Thanks very much.
be back. John, give a good look out. Strike it. That'll do for now. Keep your eyes skinned. Okay, up here. So far. The PO and a couple of our chaps caught that last one. Badly? Pretty badly. They seem to be breaking off. Looks as if they've had enough. The e boats didn't stay long either. Maybe they're bluffing. How's that fire going? I'll find out. Sir. The fire's under control, sir. There were five casualties all told. Two of the deckhands caught him. Right. No sign of them now. I think you can give the stand down. Gun screws? Right, sir. Thank you. Okay, stand down, lads. Busy morning. Too busy. We shall come anyway. I'm just going down to see how the PO is, Bombardier. Right, sir. Let's get the pit smartened up and some ammo clips. Mm, pretty bad. What do you mean? I shouldn't say too much. I think he's coming around. You've had a bit of a smack, chum. But you'll be all right. I'll just nip up and let the old man know how he's getting on. Keep an eye on him. Shall be a sec. I hope the old man should give us a talk. Excuse me, sir. How are they, Johnson? Well, two of them will be all right, sir. P.O.'s in a bit of a mess, but it right through the shoulder about the lungs, sir. Need a doctor by the look of him. Well, we could put him ashore at Jib if he's in a bad way, providing that we call there. Jib, sir? Depends what the doctor says, though I imagine he'd prefer to be in hospital at home than at Jib. At home, sir, yes. And you can pass that information on to the gun crews if you like, Johnson. They've worked for it. Very good, sir. Funny war. We go here, we go there. We start out for one place and we finish up in another. First it's Egypt, then it's Italy, and now it's home. I thought we were going to India. How is he? He'll be okay. Bill, if I don't get back... Oh, uh, you'll get back? That necklace. You can have it if it's any use to you. <laughs> I was only kidding about that girl. Never really knew her. I thought as much. Got ginger hair, hasn't she? She was telling me about a shy sailor. Same old liar. All right. I'll have a waiting on the quayside for you when we get back. I believe he's on the level this time. For a change. Take a look at that, Mr. Mate. The 
with you, fellas. I've got some news. Oh, dry up. How's the P.O.? He'll do all right. All right, all right, if you don't want to hear it. Listen, I really have got some news. You've got some what? No, I mean it. What again? I... No, honestly, so do we. Come on over with it. Well, where is it this time? From there, Panama. Well, it isn't anywhere, really. I, I was only kidding. Yeah! yeah. Come on, <laughs>